is Anna Louise Richardson and I'm a visual artist and independent curator. I mostly work in drawing and installation, mostly charcoal drawings of animals and people about kind of the way that we relate to nature and place and how that's shaped by storytelling and imagination. I live on a, a big cattle farm south of Perth and I'm the sixth generation to live here. It's not long for Australian standards but for invasion, yes, it's been, been a while and it's great. I love, I love living here and working here and my work is about the environment and the land and I love being out of the city and I love being somewhere peaceful. Materials I use are mostly charcoal, sometimes graphite and other types of drawing medium. I've done a little bit with gold leaf, also love to work with things like glitter and materials that are not typically art materials. Glow in the dark paint and things like that. What can you add to a drawing to give it just something else? So you've, it's almost finished, it's this beautiful charcoal drawing and you just want to make it into something a little bit more. Glitter does that best, I think. And sometimes ink and watercolour and more traditional materials. I love charcoal because it's so malleable. It's really, really soft and you can get very beautiful shading, but you can also get really incredible line and detail and you can take it all away and you can add it all on. And it's so messy, but it's great. The other thing I love about it is it's completely natural material and it comes from the environment. In my practice, I like to explore themes that look at rural narratives and storytelling and specifically kind of mythology, particularly about animals and animals that may or may not exist in this Australian environment. At the moment, I'm working on a project about alien big cats or phantom cats. And they're, they're really interesting because there's this kind of community consciousness about them and belief. There's lots of Facebook groups and people who fully believe in their existence. They're things like, feral dogs and cats, some people think they might be thylacines, some people think they might actually be big panthers, could be just really spooky ghost stories. And I love these stories. People really connect with them, they're about the places that they're in and they represent something about the kind of identity of living in the environment and living particularly in the bush. important to me because I grew up surrounded by animals like all of my interactions with the environment have pretty much been through animals and place and also all of my interactions with the bush have been about animals I'm really interested in them I'm also really scared of them like you know people are scared of the dark or people that might be coming to their house at night not scared of people totally scared of animals different kinds of animals like foxes and snakes and things like that but they are my consciousness of what mythologies might be out there so I guess I'm really interested in looking at that as well animals and people and how they connect to place also done some projects recently about Far Lap. The significance of that one animal in the Australian consciousness is amazing. So I'm really interested in how this horse is very, very famous, had this huge impact on Australian identity, particularly post-depression era. And he died in mysterious circumstances, which I think is part of why it's so well known now and this, this story just keeps going. But he basically got dissected and spread around the country and then 
his skeleton went to New Zealand and his heart's in one place and his hide's in another and it's really interesting how we deal with animals. They mean so much but we treat them in a really bizarre way. Yeah, really, really interested in that. Done a lot of projects about horses. I'm ready to put that aside and work on other things for a while and I think the cats, the phantom cats are gonna keep me going. curator as well and I work on a whole lot of different themes mostly about identity looking at marginalized communities and also the way that we interpret and record history. I'm working on a curatorial project at the moment which is going to open at Fremantle Art Centre in a couple of weeks. It's called I Was Here and it looks at invisibility, absence, denial and the rewriting of history. There are seven artists in the show and it's going to be amazing. Really looking forward to it. Working as a curator as opposed to making is, it's a really interesting difference. I love doing both of them and I feel like they complement each other. Working as a curator can be great because I get to tell stories that aren't mine and I get to investigate ideas that I don't necessarily have access to culturally or they're just not things I have experienced and I don't feel like I have any reason or, or right to talk about them. But if you do it with artists and you kind of bring their conversations together in new ways, it's a really great process. They're just so generous with their time and their ideas and their feedback. It's like research, but in a really fun way and you get a different outcome from it as well. And I just want artists to have really great opportunities and. Working with them is fun. I want to curate. I want to do both forever. Growing up on a farm has influenced my practice like completely. My worldview has been shaped by being on a really big piece of land. I think my personal space bubble and my kind of understanding of space is big. It's not like growing up in a station, but it's still, there's a lot of space. Everything you look at is like farmland or bushland and you kind of know it all. Some things, I guess for my practice, it's shaped the way I look at animals and our relationship with animals are not so lovey, fluffy, fluffy, everything must live. We raise them for eating. Pets are pets and they do die a lot sometimes and things do have a life and a death and it's really sad but it's part of the kind of circle of everything. My work has changed and shifted mostly in terms of scale. I love working big, I love working life size, so whatever it is I'm going to draw it that big, like I'm going to draw a horse full size, I'm going to draw a rabbit full size. It can be tricky sometimes, limitations, I haven't drawn an elephant yet or a blue whale or anything like that. One day you get more relaxed, you loosen up a bit, you kind of don't worry about having everything to be absolutely perfect and I'm also getting more into projects and turning them into longer term investigations and looking at ways that I can really engage with a theme or an idea. So the um, Phantom Cat project is really about that as well. And I'm very lucky to have received a fellowship from the Department of Culture and the Arts to pursue that project. So I'm loving working on one thing and just really getting into it. I want to contribute to cultural production and kind of our record of being here and what it means to be a human being and kind of interpret the world around us. I love living here and working here and making here. Being in Perth I love because I think that we have a great community of artists and it's really, it's a really supportive community. I've lived here all my life and the farm is really important to me and my family live here and my husband's family live here. So I guess it's like, this is home. This is where we'll live and where we'll make art. We would love to travel and possibly live in other places, but we'll always come back here. I guess that's kind of more important than thinking, what's my favourite city that I would love to go to? I just want to be at home and make art about that. Mm -hmm.